Hello! In the last video, we discussed how to add images of your consent form to your REDCap project. So here in the uh, interim, I've gone ahead and uploaded all of the pages of my sample consent form. Now we're going to want to go ahead and add a few more fields to actually collect the information about our study participants, as well as our study personnel who are conducting the consenting. So here we can see if we look at the end of our uh, form, we're collecting the name, signature, and date. And so we can go ahead and collect the same information. So the first will be to say add field. It's defaulting to begin new section since that's the last item I added, but I'll say text box. And I'll go ahead and say first name. In fact, I'll say participant first name. And maybe I'll call it part first name. I'm going to leave validation off. Uh, the main reason I tend to leave validation off in the case of names is that uh, while it may seem like, for example, letters might be option ideal, uh, letters will not allow us to have spaces in our words. So sometimes if a person's name may have a space, uh, it may not be so ideal to have that. But I am going to mark it as required, and I am going to mark it as an identifier. I'll scroll down and save that. I'll go ahead and add a last name, participant last name, part last name. I'm breaking these up. Uh, you do want it to follow exactly how you have collected it from your uh, study design, but for the e-consent form, uh, it will work well to have these separate. So just make sure you also uh, write that in when you are getting your informed, cons uh, informed consent form approved by the IRB. Again, I'm going to leave validation off but I will say it's required an identifier. Save, I'll scroll down just a little bit. That will do participant signature. And now I'm gonna go up to field type and change this to signature. You could also, depending on how you've uh, had your study approved by the IRB, you might opt instead for something like a pin code that you're providing that's unique to your participant. But for right now, we'll just call this part sig part sign, for example. We'll say it's an identifier and required. And you're going to want to collect the same information for your uh, study personnel who will also be consenting. So here, if we, for example, want to, actually before I do the study personnel, we will just include date since that was an option. There. This For this, I will have it uh, validate. So you'll have it in whatever format, format is most appealing to you. I'll say it's required, but it's not really an identifier. And then we would go ahead and add the same information for our study personnel who are conducting the consenting. So we'll say uh, study personnel. Whatever language you're having approved by the IRB is the language you'll use here. We'll just call it SP first name. Again, I'm going to leave validation alone, but we will say it's required in an identifier. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing for last name. SP last name. Mark it again. Save it. Again, we'll add a signature. So following exactly how the IRB is provided to us. Uh, study personnel signature. And finally, study personnel date. We'll hit save. In the next video, we'll discuss how you can enable surveys in your project to be able to send out your, uh, your informed consent form as uh, a consent form using the electronic consent framework that comes with REDCap. And the nice thing about that will be it will automatically save a PDF uh, and is considered to be equivalent to in-person uh, paperwork, uh, provided that you've had it approved by the IRB.